Hey guys, so I'm back with another video and this is going to be a continuation of our blazing blog, a blog app using blazor server. So this is part three of the series and first two parts are already live on the YouTube. So you can check those out. I would recommend you guys to check those two parts before continuing on this part. So I'm going to add the link of both of those parts in the description box. So please do check those out before continuing on this one. So, so far we have created the project. We have cleaned up all the uh, files, which we don't need. We set up our EF core block context. We added our entities. We added our seeding data for our user. We added migrations, we ran migrations, and then we started working on UI. So we have created our main layout with this top navigation bar body and in the top navigation bar we designed our top nav bar basically and in this part we are going to work on the login page so let's get started first thing we need to add a new razor component in pages folder so let's add that razor component and we'll name it login only so login and we need to make it routable by adding at the rate page directive on this page and slash login save it and if we run the app now here and now if we click on login it will navigate to this login page this page if we click on any other page then it will now let's start designing this page so first thing we need a login model so for that let's add a new folder let me stop the app create a new folder and we'll name it models and in models we'll create a new class and let's say login model and this is going to have two properties so first one is for username and the second one is going to be for password password let's add data annotation validations so it should be required and then it will be an email address and data type is going to be email address and then i think that's fine and for password we'll have required and then let's say a min length of five at least five character password we need and that that's fine now we'll use this login model in our page so let's go to login dot razor and here First thing, let's have a private login model and let's call it model only and we'll initialize it with default value. And now we'll use the, we'll use default card design from bootstrap to design our login page. So for that first thing, let me run this so that we can see the uh, design output in real time app is here login and in login let's say like this like this okay now let's see first thing we need div class container div class container next thing we'll use div class card and this card it comes from the bootstrap before that let me have okay let, let me have card only div class card and this inside this card we'll have three sections so div class first one is card header 
then second one card body and then third one card footer so in card header let me have the simple login text save it and we can see it coming so login and in footer we'll have a button so button type submit class btn btn primary and then login button so login button and let's say not btn primary btn success fine and btn accept smaller fine so we have this button now we need this card body and now if you see we have button inside this card footer this different section and we are going to have our form inside this section so we cannot have our edit form control here because we need to submit the form so for that we'll let's wrap this complete uh, card in that edit form or maybe let's add wrap this complete container move this here find edit form and edit form needs and model so model we already have this underscore model we are going to use this one model and now in this card body let's have our username and password fields so for this let me have div class and margin bottom three then we'll have a label here with class form label and we'll name it let's say username save and it is coming then we'll have a field for uh, username so we'll say input text and we'll bind its value with the underscore model dot username and then we'll have a placeholder and before placeholder let me add a bootstrap class that is form control and then a placeholder text let's say enter username save input text what is the issue edit input text okay it looks fine what's the issue save it let me rerun the app app is here login and we have this username section here fine next let me copy this for password but before that we are going to use data annotation validation so after this edit form let me add data annotation validator so it will allow us to enable the data annotation validations and if there is any error in this input text then we'll use this validation message element it needs and for not validation summary validation message it needs and four attribute uh, four parameters so we'll give it underscore model dot username fine now we'll simply copy this div and paste it for password password model dot password model dot password then in placeholder enter password and one more thing on this input text we'll set the type html attribute to password to make it password save it and we can see these two things now and if we click on login then data annotation validations are also working if we add some invalid text so it will say invalid email if we do this so it is saying that it should be at least five characters you can modify these mass uh, these error messages on this model only you can add the error messages but for now i'm having it default only 
okay fine now first thing let's uh, have some space from this top section so on this container we'll add let's say mt5 and we have this spacing from here and on smaller screen this looks okay but on larger screens it this does not look that good so we can have fine we can define the maybe max width for this login container so on this card maybe let's define a style and max width let's say 450 ps there could be another approaches as well but for now i'm having this only so we have this but we need this to be in center uh, horizontally right so we have multiple approaches we could have insert container we could have row row and then column offset but i'm using this so on this container mt5 i'll use display flex and then justify content center so it will move to center on all the screens so this looks good fine now the login ui is here now when we click on login it should login right it should navigate to the home page so for that let's inject the navigation manager so navigation manager navigation manager we'll call it this only and when we click on this login and if it passes all the data annotation validations so on valid submit we'll call a method let's call it login async and we'll create this method here so private async task login async here and for now let's mimic a delay away task dot delay of let's say five seconds and after five seconds we want user to navigate to the home page for that we have this navigation manager dot navigate to and we have this slash so the home page save it fine and let's log in email login is it doing something we have clicked multiple times and null reference because it does not come here okay maybe we clicked on it multiple times and after it was awaited from here and it so the first request came through this it navigated to this one then second request came through this at this point of time this component does not exist so it is throwing this exception so we need to handle this as well so for handling this we'll somehow uh, make sure that it should uh, the button should disable until we have clicked it and if we don't have any response yet then it should be disabled so for that let's uh, have a private bool property and let's call it is processing and the default will be false and when we came here we will set is false is processing to true okay and then we'll have a try catch and in try after doing this we don't need to do anything but if there is any error then we'll not throw it and we'll set is processing to false again so that user can do something about right when this is processing was true we need to disable this button so we have two approaches either we can directly disable it or we can have some other indication so for that let's do one thing let's have some overlay 
processing logic for this when it's processing the request right so let's do this so we are on login page max width 450 so let's use this width only not max width okay cool hmm. now before this edit form let's say if is processing then we'll have one overlay here so let's say a class overlay then we'll have our loading text here so loading text and before this loading text let's have one more element and we'll call it loading wrapper the loading wrapper and this loading text and let's have it logging in dot 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 fine now we'll have couple of we have these classes let's have the css uh, properties for this so first thing let's have a style here style type text css okay and first thing for this overlay let's have it overlay at position fixed do we have seen uh, the bootstrap classes for this position fixed i know we have do we have left or right classes left or L zero something like this no okay position fixed and then we'll have we want to cover the entire screen so we'll use left zero right zero top zero and bottom zero then we'll have background as black left right color black and we'll have opacity for this opacity to make it a uh, kind of transparent so let's have 0 0.5 and now i think we are good to check it let's set is processing true so that we can see this thing overlay is it working no right left zero right zero position fixed everything looks fine z index if we make it one no let's see what is the issue here so this thing before this login form login form before this card form and style we have container for we have style but we don't have this because is processing is not true but we set it true that means it did not pick up the change let's restart so it's here login and yes now we can see it okay so first thing we have this and this footer is coming on top of this uh, overlay but this overlay should be on top always so we are going to use let's say 2000 and this is not a magic number bootstrap mostly uses 1049 then 10504 all these their alerts models and all those things so we need to show our overlay on top of everything that's why i'm using this 2000 range so let's have this and we are good so this thing is working overlay is here but now we need this text logging in to center of the screen so for that on this loading wrapper we can say dflex then justify content center align items center 
align item center logging in is here now after that we need this logging in text to be a big curve so let's say f as one then the color should be white so text white and we cannot see that because it is uh, behind the overlay we could say so on this loading wrapper we'll have a z index greater than this overlay so we'll have z index at 2001 and it is not coming and why so let's see where is it let's see change this color to something like let's say text do we have this text red yes text black which is defaults logging in this is here but we need this load loading wrapper to save this position fixed and this left right top bottom here all this so position fixed then let's add these things here as well and now we can see it here now let's change the black to white and now we can see it here so everything looks good design wise this is coming along now if for now let's again change it back to false we are adding this manual delay here so first let's see the happy flow so we'll save everything we'll restart rerun the app this time when we click on login button it should wait for five seconds it should show that logging in loader there and then it should navigate to the home page so we added this it's logging in after five seconds we cannot click anywhere on the screen now it navigated to the home page now let's see if we have some error so let's throw from here so throw new exception test exception right let's restart it it's here login let's do this this and login now if we login there's nothing and if we add a breakpoint we can see it will come here it will show this and we cannot see that loading because it is happening so fast we have this catch exception in this case we should also have uh, error property here so let's have it error and the default is going to be null only and let's do this right await first then throw the exception if it came to catch we'll simply do this and we'll set the underscore error to whatever error message we have and then we'll display this error message so maybe on top or on bottom anywhere it's up to us where we are displaying it so let's display it inside card body only so we'll say div class mb3 or we don't need this we'll check if not string dot is null or white space this error if it had some value then we'll show plus in red color this underscore error will show this okay and whenever we are clicking on login at that time we'll set underscore error again to null so this time first thing this time it will show error let's run it 
app is here go to login add the credentials and we click on login it is trying to login and after five seconds there is an exception so it will throw the exception it will remain on the same page with this text and if we remove this through now everything is in happy flow now if we log in it is trying to logging in and after five seconds login was successful it navigated to the home page so that means login flow and this ui is working so for this video that's all what we are going to do and now in next part or maybe before that let me move these things to separate css file so let's come here on this login let's create isolated css file this and we'll move these two css classes here and from this we'll remove this style altogether now we should be good okay okay so that's it for this video and in next video we are going to work on the actual login functionality we'll add our business logic we'll uh, fetch the username password we'll match with the database username password we'll make that uh, that service call from here we'll create a service class so all those and then we'll implement the custom authentication so that's all we are going to do in next part so please like this video share this video and subscribe my channel i'll be uploading the next part very soon till then bye bye